Hello and welcome back to Cracking the Cryptic. Now, we've gathered a lot of subscribers lately and it all seemed to have stemmed off the back of a video that I did recently on a variant from the UK Open Championship. And so I'm going to do another variant Sudoku this time and we'll see how this goes. Um, I do urge you to have a look at this puzzle, but do learn the rules here. Now, what we've got is a puzzle in which, again, as usual, we use the numbers one to nine in every row, column, and box. But also, we've been given these two gray shapes in the grid. And the two gray shapes are clones. They're identical, which means the same numbers appear in the same positions in each of them. So up here, we've got four, five, seven, eight, nine appearing in this, this shape. So in this shape, that must be four, five, seven, eight, nine. So although it looks like we've only got nine given numbers in the grid, we've got these two shapes and they're very powerful at adding a bunch more information. So once you get into variant Sudoku, the number of givens isn't necessarily all that important. In fact, it's quite it's probably quite a skill to have achieved a puzzle like this with only one of each number given. So do understand what the rules are, but do have a go at the puzzle, pause the video, and now I'll have my go at it and see how it compares in, in terms of your solved puzzle. So the first thing I'm going to do is to fill in that 45789 from the grey shape up here. You have to always try and make sure you get them in the right place, otherwise that destroys clone Sudoku. I've only played the clone a few times before, so we'll see how it goes. Now look at this one and two. They're very useful because they rule out all these three cells up here from having a one and a two. So in this top box, the one and two pair must be between there and there. So the other ones must be three, eight, and nine. And look, we've got an eight and a nine in that column. So that cell must be a three. We must have eight, nine there and eight, nine there. Now that's quite interesting in terms of this pair because that means that these cells must be eight or nine and these cells must be one or or two. Now I have to deviate from the normal notation here. Normally I'll be putting in pencil marks or these red numbers where there's only one possibility within a box. But here now we've ruled out these as the only possibilities for the cell as well. So that's what they are down here. So in this column, in column four here, we've got an eight nine pair, a one two pair, and the numbers four seven. So everything else in these boxes must be three, five, or six. This cell, because it's in the gray clone, must be the same as this. So it can really only be a three or a six, um, because in this version of it down here, there's a five in the same box. Um, for those two, we don't quite know enough about them yet. Um, three, five, six, eight, nine. Now this cell could be a seven, yeah. I haven't got anything about that. So let's have a look over at this box, top left box here. We've got one, two, three, and look, six, seven, eight are all ruled out from row three. So they must be four, five, nine in some order. And the four and five here down here constrain those two cells. And the top three must be six, seven, eight. Now the reason I haven't written an eight in the top left cell it's because we know that eight and nine in this row are there and there. So that must be six or seven. Um, what else can we deduce here? Let's see, nine, eight, three, five, six. Ah, this cell, now in this column, it's got three, five, six, eight, nine already. So it can only be one, two, four, or seven. But its clone equivalent is up here, and that can't be a one or a two. So it must be four or seven in that cell, in both variants of the clone. Um, have we got anything else? The bottom of the clone, we're not getting very far with. But that's interesting. We've got four, five, nine there, six, seven, eight there. So this has to be one, two, or three. So I might fill those in as possibilities. It's clone cell is down there. And then up here, no, it's much harder to be constrained about this cell. So we don't quite know how that's working. 
Right, 7, 8, 9 are in this box here. And we know that the top three cells can't be 4 or 5 because 4 or 5 are already in row 7. We also have just worked out that this cell can't be 4 or 5, so 4 and 5 must be down here. And that's very useful. And look, we've got a 4 there to decide which way round they are. 5 there, 4 there. Um, and we can put those in the clone shape up here as well. And that's really quite good progress. Now this cell, 5, 9, 4, 3, 6, 8, it's 1, 2, or 7. Can't be a 2 because its clone equivalent is here and there's a 2 in the same column. So it's 1 or 7. And what else have we got? Ah, now in this column here where we know the 8, 9 pair and we know the 1, 2 pair, all that's left is 3 and 6. So this pair of cells is 3 and 6 in some order. Um, I don't know enough about the rest there. Now what about, oh, this one, look, we've got a 4, 9 there. And it's kind of, if this, this cell here we established from earlier from that 6, 7, 8, this is either 4 or 9. And it's got a cloned equivalent. I should have spotted that before. And that's here. And it can't be a 4. So that must be a 9. And that resolves the 5 and the 4 next to it up here. That's nice. Um, this one can't be 2, 3, 9, 5, 4. But there's a lot of other things it could be. So 4 must be there or there. I don't know which don't want to mix up my notation, so I'm not changing the style of that at the moment. Um, now, well done if you're spotting somewhere else we can go. I'm not yet. I mean, I know that's a one, two, or three, but it's not all that helpful. Now, this cell up here can't be four, five, or seven, or eight, or nine. They're in, all in the box. Can't be three because that's there and this is an equivalent cell in the other clone. So it must be one, two, or six, but I don't think we know which yet. Um, eight, nine, three, six, five. No, nothing much we can deduce there. Nine, four, five, that's one or two, that's one or seven, that's three or six. Where does 8 go here? Oh, that's quite interesting. Where does 8 go in this bottom box? Um, it's not in any of the number, any of the cells we've got numbers written in, and that 8 means it's not there. So it is in this column. Now, we don't know which of those two cells it is, but we know that if there's an 8 in that column, then this is not an 8. And therefore, the 8 in this box must be in this cell. Now that has fixed this 8-9 pair here at the top of the clone, which arose from this 8-9 pair. So we can fill in 9 and 8 in that order. And that looks like it's quite helpful. 8, 5, 9, 4. Now this 1 that we've been able to put in has resolved this 2, this 1-2 pair here. That fixes the other part of the 1-2 pairing, and we can translate that down to the other cone, and now to the other part of the clone. And now in this cell, which we knew was 1, 2, or 3, it can't be a 1, that's in the same box, can't be a 2, that's in the same row, so it's a 3. This is either 2 or 6, we don't know which yet. That fixes that one as a 3. Um, this is either 2 or 6. So again, pretty good progress just by carrying on. Now this, in this box here, we've only got the two six left. And look, there's a six above it, so this must be a two. That fixes the six at the top of the clone shape. Um, we haven't got that one fixed yet, but these are one, four, seven in the central column there. Six, three, five. So these last two cells must be two and nine, and that nine resolves which way round they are. <clears throat> so six, seven, we don't know which order. Um, we haven't got that resolved or that one. No, they're not resolved there either. So 
8316. Ah, oh, that 6 that we've just put in there has fixed this 6, 7 pair. And that means that we've got 4, 5, 7 up in the top row there, and 2 and 9 in that row, and the 9 below there sorts out which way around they are. Now the 9s, I think we can probably finish off all the 9s in the grid. That must be 1, 9, 9, and that does all the 9s. So we've got them all done. Um, what else have we got from that last little burst? Two, three, nine, five. Now we knew 8 was here or here, and that puts an 8 here, but we don't know which cell. Hmm, where can we go next? You know, again, feel free to think ahead of me. I'll be pleased if you do. Ah, seven. If we look at a seven in this box here, where can a seven go? Well, this seven means it can't be in this column. This seven means it can't be here, and we know that this cell is three or six. That's from the clone, I think. So this must be the seven, and that resolves our seven there. That fixes our seven for one group in the middle there. And seven. I'm still not sure which of these is a one. Still could be any of one, six, or eight at the bottom of the clone here. But we have very nearly finished with the clone constraint. Once we get done with those two last cells, then we're just down to a classic Sudoku, and we can hopefully finish that off as quickly as would be normal. Um, now, what else have we got? Still need to do something in the middle. 7594, that can't be a 7. And that's interesting because the only place for a 7 in column 2 now is here in the middle. Um, nine, seven, seven. Which one of these is a 2? Don't know. Ah, 4 though. There's a 4 in row 4 and a 4 in row 6. The 4 in row 5 can't be here because of this 4. It must be here. 2, 3, 9, 4, 5, 7. That can't be an 8. That can't be an 8. The only place for an 8 in column 3 is here. And that fixes the bottom left part of the clone, which is helpful. Um, so now across this row, we've got everything except one and two. And look, there's a one there to decide which way around they go. Um, and now we can finish off column one. They're the only possible places um, we've got. So that has resolved the last clone square as a six. And that finishes off, I think, all the deductions we need to get this done now. Nice puzzle, um, not quite finished yet, but very nearly that five resolves this group up here, which is useful. So I think we are finished now. That's eight, one, two, eight and seven must be in that order because of this eight. Got a four and a six to place here, one and a three to place here. That all looks like it's working. Seven, six, two more numbers, five and three. And there we are. That's the complete solution to this clone Sudoku. I mean, it's an interesting variant. I quite like the fact that just this shape in the grid can be, a shape that large can be filled consistently from one um, half of the grid to the other. That's very neat. And it was a very interesting solve, everything that we did fed into the next part. So that's been, um, in my view, quite an interesting exercise in uh, a variant Sudoku. I like that type. And thanks very much to um, the UK Puzzle Association for showing it. It's been very interesting. Um, I know I say things are interesting too much. That was commented on in the last video. I've almost certainly done it again in this. If you feel like playing a drinking game to me saying interesting, you can pick pretty much any video I've done because I always find something interesting about these puzzles. Um, but thank you very much for watching. Please do subscribe if you haven't already or if you've just come across this. Um, and alternatively, 
Feel free to sponsor us on Patreon. We like that as well. Or post comments about the solves and what you'd like to see us doing in these videos. Um, it's been fun. Thank you very much for watching and see you again on Cracking the Cryptic.